Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to work with MIDI and a real keyboard using Cubase. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Korg Cross 2, and I'm using Cubase version 10, and I've got my uh, Roland Studio Capture interface, but all these principles will apply for, uh, you know, any kind of MIDI keyboard, any kind of keyboard that has MIDI. Um, or any kind of interface. So, first things first, um, before you launch Cubase, you need to make sure that your keyboard is powered on and you have your USB connected. And I have my left and right audio coming out of my cord cross and into my interface. And I have both left and right, so that's important to have this hooked up in stereo. So the first thing we want to do here in Cubase is we want to come in here and add a track. We want to add a MIDI track. So we're going to select MIDI here and we're recording a bass line in this case. So we're going to just give it a name there and we can expand this a little bit here. And so it's important over here you want to set the input and the outputs. So we're going to re change this input to cross 2 and then the output to cross 2. And so when we record here, it's just going to be recording data. It's not actual audio. But what we want to do in this demo is I'm going to show you how to record that MIDI and then send it back to the keyboard so that we can record that audio. And we're also going to uh, do some quantizing. So we're going to set our BPM. Let's just go with 95, turn our metronome on. And I've got my keyboard plugged in here. So let's hear what it sounds like. So this is just a basic uh, bass patch. So here, let's try to come up with something. Okay, so that was very basic. And so um, the first thing I wanna show you is the quantize. And that's you you got to have your snap on and we've got this set to use quantize and we're gonna put this to 16th it's just is just how precise it's gonna shift those notes in so depending on what you're playing you may need to do 30 seconds or if you're really fast 64ths but I believe everything I played in there was within a 16th note so we're gonna get a better view of this here and so really all I have to do is hit Q and you'll see these notes kind of shift into position here I'll zoom in so you can see so I hit Q there I'm gonna undo that I show you one other thing you can do if you if you notice these this trail doesn't change here when I hit Q if you want to make uh, these extend all the way there's a advanced feature here let me find it it's uh, go down to edit and advanced quantize and uh, you can click quantize MIDI event lengths so that there and then we hit Q so now we can see that that all lined up so if we want we can play this back So we can tell that's all in sync. And so now if we want to actually pull the audio in here, what we need to do is we need to create a left and right track. So we're going to click add track and it's going to be an audio and I'm, you got to set your input. So you need to know which input your left channel is and your right channel. On mine, it's the um, three and four. So we're going to call this Can name it whatever you want so that's the left channel and now we got to create the right channel so we're going to set the input here okay so now we've got both of our left and right channels here and so what you want to do is and this is really important is you want to pan the left channel all the way left and the right channel all the way right and then we'll hold shift to get these both ready to record. 
And so what's going to happen here is this is going to send this MIDI back to our keyboard. And since our keyboard is hooked up with our left and right cables into our interface, we'll be able to record this audio. So let's go ahead and hit record. So now if we wanted to, we could uh, mute this MIDI so we're not continually sending MIDI back to our keyboard. And so if we listen here, we should have actual audio. So there we have the audio captured in from our keyboard. So we could go along and do other instruments like piano or strings or synth and then that's how you would actually record the audio into into Cubase and furthermore you could take this baseline since this is just MIDI data here and we could create a virtual instrument so we'll click on instrument and we'll go to synth and let's just use the retro log and let's add a uh, let's find a bass patch in here Well, let's see. Let's just see what this sounds like. That's kind of strange, but we'll go with it. So we could take this and we can hold control and drag it down. And so now we're going to get both of these bass sounds combined. So that's kind of the neat thing about MIDI is that you can shift it around and there's one other thing I'll show you too if you go in here and you double click on it say you wanted to raise this up an octave you can hold highlight everything like I just did and hit shift and the up key will take you up a whole octave or if you don't hold shift you can go down half steps Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much that.